Well, I don't know about you, uh, but tonight is a night that I look forward to. Um, and in fact, whether you know it or not, you actually also anticipate this night the whole year. Every time we gather on a Sunday morning and we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are anticipating this very night when the Lord himself gives to us what he has promised. On this night when the Lord was betrayed. We've heard those words quite often this year. Now normally stories of betrayal aren't celebrated. Would you agree? We don't hold them in high esteem. We certainly remember these stories and prayerfully learn from them, but we don't celebrate stories of betrayal. Now, tonight, the mood isn't necessarily celebratory. Oftentimes, during this Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, tones it down. Good Friday brings it down even lower in anticipation of the celebration of Easter. But we aren't necessarily celebrating tonight. However, every time we do gather and we hear those words on the night when Christ was betrayed, we do celebrate. We celebrate what Jesus gives to us. We celebrate forgiveness of sins that he gives. We celebrate life everlasting, which he gives to us, especially through this bread and this wine, this body and his blood. We come to the table. You will come to the table tonight broken and sorrowful and sinful, and yet we leave the table after being fed by Jesus' own body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, renewed and strengthened and full of faith. We come to this table and we, re- we are renewed and joyful. For on this night, Jesus Christ makes a covenant with his disciples and with us for all time. A covenant that is sealed in his own blood. A covenant that says, I will purchase you with my very own blood. I will redeem you with my very own life. I will restore you to the joy of your salvation. So now take and eat, take, and drink, and do this in remembrance of me. Now, like I said, normally stories of betrayal aren't celebrated, but this is unlike any other story. Normally, stories of betrayal are told about friends who abandon other friends for whatever reason. But Jesus wasn't abandoned by his friends, was he? Normally, stories of betrayal today are told about, um, I don't know, employees who sell out the company secrets or sell out their boss for more money, maybe for a better deal. But Jesus wasn't sold out for money, was he? Stories of betrayal today are told about cheating spouses who seek out happiness and love in someone other than their husband or wife. But Jesus wasn't cheated on, was he? Well, in all those cases, he was. He was cheated on by his fellow Jews, betrayed by his friends, his very own disciples. He was sold out for 30 pieces of silver by one of his own disciples, Judas. In the church, we often talk about Jesus being the bridegroom, and we are his bride, and we have committed adultery with our Lord and Savior. We have sought out comfort and hope and security in things other than His love and His promises. And I wonder, as we think about these things, how we have betrayed and lied to and cheated on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, what do we hope to receive as a reward for our actions? What do we hope to gain by abandoning Him, by betraying Him, by cheating on Him, Well, I think we hope to gain life. We hope to gain the life we want. We hope to gain a better life. More money will make us more happy. Friends who agree with my lifestyle and my choices, who won't say anything negative against me, that'll make me happy. Work and play will give me meaning and purpose. I'll do those things instead of coming here and receiving from God bread and wine. I'll spend my time doing what I want to do rather than to receive what the Lord offers on a weekly basis. I'll do things my own way, on my own terms, and I'll be happy 
and I'll leave Jesus alone. Just like his disciples on the night he was betrayed. But Jesus' story of betrayal is unlike most others. Jesus, after being betrayed and cheated on and abandoned, didn't sulk, didn't move away, didn't harbor anger or hold a grudge or resentment. He didn't seek revenge or seek out a new group of friends to hang out with. Rather, he prayed. And then he suffered. And then he bled. And he died. For those very people who turned their back on him. He endured the Father turning his face away in disgust. For when the Father saw his Son, he didn't see his Son. He saw your sin and my sin. He saw your betrayal and your abandonment and your adultery. He saw all your sins on Jesus and left him there utterly alone. So that Christ alone might pay the price for your sin. Now that's a betrayal story like any other. And it gets better. Because not only did Christ die for you, even though we don't deserve it, what's more is that he comes back to you with his arms wide open in love and grace. He offers you mercy and peace and life. He gives you gifts that grant forgiveness and life everlasting. And that is why when we come here tonight, and we gather here on Sunday morning to receive the gift of Christ's body and blood, we celebrate. Because it's about the love that Christ has given to us. We celebrate Jesus who did all these things for you. And it's good to remember. It's good to be reminded about Jesus who on this night, when he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And then he gave it to all his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them. And he said, take and drink. This is my blood of a new covenant, which I give to you. In my blood given and shed for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you drink it. Christ offers us his body and blood when we gather here together. He offers forgiveness of sins every morning. He comes back to us with loving arms, those who have turned their back on him, and he offers you what you need to live. Why would you choose to be anywhere else on a Sunday morning, here at church, when God himself is offering you what you need to live. We need Christ daily. We need Christ's forgiveness indefinitely. We need Christ's gifts as often as they are offered to us. So thanks be to God that he gave us this meal tonight, which we get to celebrate every time we gather, so that you can taste and that you can see that Jesus Christ is real, that his love for you is real, that his forgiveness for you is real. Christ comes to you with love and forgiveness to serve you, to give you these gifts of life so that he would be in us and we would be in him for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.